seed, which we went into last week, week three, and we're going directly into the split between Israel and Judah. Okay. Why did the most high curse his people? And where are they? Right? <laughs> oh yeah. We're going to go into the 12 lost tribes found, and we're going to also break down Israelites deliverance. Okay. How it was emphasized in Christ's ministry given to the apostles on exactly, that's right, on exactly how to gather the lost tribes of Israel in the last days, which was Christ's true mission. We're going to go into the scattering of Israel and the gathering of Israel this coming Sunday. Okay. And I hope you all will be there. Keep in mind, if this interests you and you want this history and some of the research we've gone into with the extra literature and references, just go to historytimes.org, enroll. We have the administration working behind the scenes who can just make sure you get all the three lessons missed along with the new link for the new lesson. And guess what? The, the news is, 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 is like none other, okay? So if this interests you, go to History times with an s.org and enroll it supports the work it supports everything we're doing here all right and and just like the bible says if we have sown into you our spiritual things shall we not reap your carnal things <laughs> which means that's right you can't muzzle the ox that tread the corn okay because the more you help us the more we research the more we can we can we can finish this ministry and Christ said that this message shall be taught throughout the four corners of the earth. Then the end shall come. Then the end shall come. The Pope, the papacy, uh, Islam, they've been all over the earth and we're still in these horrendous conditions. So it's not talking about the ministry of Islam, even though they may have some core principles that are okay, or Christianity. It, wasn't, it was talking about a distinct ministry that would shake the earth, that would begin to awaken, to awaken, that's right, the lion, the 12 tribes of Israel led by Judah. That was the gospel Christ was talking about. And we're going to go into that and more this coming Sunday. Okay, historytimes.org. Now, okay, we're over a thousand. Thank you for hitting the like button. Let's talk now. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we all see the title. What exactly is an Israelite? Huh? What exactly is an Israelite? Hmm. Is our topic today. Is an Israelite a Jew? An Israeli? A black man? What is an Israelite? And above all, let's talk about it today and we're going to put it on the table. Just say hypothetically what the brothers on the corner on the corners and I was once out there all over the place since the 90s. What exactly suppose what the brothers on the corners preaching preaching claiming to be Israel's Israelites. Hypothetically, suppose they are correct. So we're going to leave this open in it for if someone would like to oppose some of the history of our people being Israelites, the phones will be open to bring that information to why you think to the contrary. But hypothetically, suppose what brothers and sisters are saying on the corners are correct. That the black slaves that were brought over North, Central, South America, different parts of America on slave ships, right? In Brazil, the West Indies, Haiti. Suppose hypothetically that the, the blacks, Hispanics, and the natives and the indigenous people of Australia, the Fiji Islands, Hawaii, and different parts of Asia like the Philippine, the Philippines, or the Cambodians, or Vietnamese. Suppose these people are, in fact, from the lost tribes of Israel. Now, does identifying as Israelites, does that threaten 
the status quo. Right? Or are only one people able to state claim to be an Israelite? I'm going to ask a question again. Listen to what I'm asking you. If the Native American Indians and blacks, Hispanics, and others begin to identify with Israelites, will that does that threaten the status quo? And if so, why would it? What's the harm in identifying with God's people, following God's law, applying that law to our communities so that we could have a better quality of life, a moral society, right? So I'm going to put that on the table today and we're going to talk about that. And for those who don't believe it's true, that's right. 515-605-9327. If you oppose if you oppose the idea of black people being Israelites, I would like you to call in this evening and tell me why. And I also need you to tell me why it wasn't an issue when other people were determined as God's people. And does that make you racist? Okay. There's a lot to, to unpack there, right? But we're going to talk tonight. Now, going back to what is an Israelite? Isn't an ideology a religion? Is it an ideology or religion? Or is it a race of people? Okay. Now, when you, when you come in and answer these questions, you can't be convoluted. You can't be in the gray area and say it's, it, it could be a little bit, of, a, a little bit of each of these. No, stand on your view of an Israelite today. No gray area. Stand on your view. Okay? Not, let me put it out there again. Is it an ideology? Is it a religion? Okay. And what we're looking at is how you view Israelites. Is it more from the religious angle? Is it an ideology? More so a mindset that you see trending from your view or are Israelites an actual people according to the Bible? Which one of those you, you lean towards? Okay. And I want to hear about that tonight because these discussions, brothers and sisters are health. These are healthy discussions. Why? Because if we don't start having these discussions, what will happen is, we will eventually will begin to allow mainstream media. Okay. CNN, mainstream media, local media, New York times, wall street. Now, I mean, New York times, Washington post, we will begin to allow them to shape the narrative of what an Israelite is. So in good faith, Outside of media, and I'm going to t show you why I'm going here, folks. I'm going to show you why I'm going here. They would like us to believe that being an Israelite is actually a monolith. There's only one idea of Isra Israelites, and that's the what? That's the media portrayal of them. Negative, unhinged, cultish, threatening. I mean, you would have thought that it was the Israelites that colonized the world and re-educated the people and killed off masses of people off of their own lands and re-educated them and enslaved them. You would, you, you would think that the Israelites were the bad ones, the way it's being portrayed, right? <laughs> right? But I digress. A healthy discussion tonight not pointing the blame, not looking at each, other, each, each another people. Let's just get your personal view of what an Israelite is, okay? And if the Israelites were to come back to the knowledge of the truth, just say black slaves in America are the Israelites. Does that threaten the status quo? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with the black man identifying, not religiously, but genetically, as an Israelite. Well, 
<laughs> I told you folks, we were going to unpack a lot this evening and it le is leading right into our lessons this coming Sunday. See, one thing about the knowledge of the Almighty and the spirit of Christ, Christ, his word, this Bible is thought provoking. Okay. It's thought provoking. It's never dull. It's insightful, right? So since we all understand there's a lot, a lot of things out there, I would like to take the conversation to the next level. Why? Why is imperative that we take this conversation to the next level? There's wolves in the hen house. That's why. There's a certain prototype mainstream media has put out there as an image for what an Israelite of what Israelites are. And when you bring a what? A more prestigious, classy, respectful example. Usually that's seldom spoke of. Usually that's deleted or taken off altogether. When it when people begin to, to have a positive view of an Israelite. That's pushed to the side by mainstream, but they will allow the most vul vulgar, threatening, evil representations on YouTube and social, me social media to continue as if it's intentional, as if they want that. With all the censorship we see out here today, you would think if someone was doing something wicked or evil and cursing people out, threatening people, have weapons or whatever the case is, hey, you would think that YouTube would have got in front of this or mainstream would have got in front of this and made sure that there's no negative portrayal that, that, that could show people in such a threatening light. But I digress. We're going to talk about it today, brothers and sisters, and y'all doing a great job. We have 1,500 in so far very early so that's a great indication that hey people are going to pile in quickly do us a favor and hit the like button so that we can jump in now before i go into a few things because i have real quick bishop amoth in the background as well as elder lawyer right now there's a brother and sister they pro they they don't even know that I'm using their video tonight. <laughs> a brother by the name of uh, Zakar and Kenya. Zakar and Kenya. Now, th these brothers, this brother and sister organically on, uh, you know, on their own uh, volition filmed their experience at the Passover at the Passover, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, our last Passover 2022, right? And what I'm going to do real quick, right? In your own time, in your own time, I'm going to, uh, of course, brothers and sisters, make sure you go to the link after the broadcast, okay? So I'm gonna put it in here so you can see it. I'm going to try to put in the links as we go, right? And why am I going here, brothers and sisters? First and foremost, for those who don't know, I'm Elder Rikashiar of the Gathering of Christ Church, and I identify not according to my religion, but my bloodline as an Israelite. So does the majority of the members that are baptized within this church. Okay. The majority of the members identify as Israelites. And also there's Gentiles, which are non-Israelites amongst the body doing the work of Christ, which means whether they be Arab or uh, white people, whether they be Hemetic people, it doesn't matter whether they be from uh, East India and have converted. Uh, we have people who are in the academy and have been baptized from Pakistan, whether they be Arabs, they've converted, right? 